Oh, oh man, this is, okay, well, I'm gonna play a sheer layer <laughs> because I don't want to look like a ghost, but oh man, this being the deepest shade, guys, if you are not very, very fair, you are not gonna be able to use this product. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm super excited to share with all of you a huge haul of K-Beauty products. So I'll be doing a full face using all of these new products from brands that I've never tried before. So I'm super excited to dive into this haul. If you're interested in learning more about K-Beauty products, then just stick around. So to start off just for some context, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I am very familiar with brands at Sephora, Beautylish, and similar retailers, but I actually haven't really dived into the world of K-Beauty makeup. So I have tried a lot of Korean skincare and I really love that, but my makeup aesthetic tends to be more on the glam colorful side. And so I haven't actually gotten that much exposure to the Asian makeup scene. That said, I just got back from a trip to Seoul. And so this was my first time visiting and being a huge beauty lover, I picked up a ton of goodies. So I have a pretty sizable haul since I got more than a full face of makeup plus a ton of skincare. So I'm really excited to run through all of these products today and see if I can do more of a Korean inspired makeup look. So without further ado, let's run through these products. So I visited two stores in Seoul to buy these makeup products. First off, we have Chikur. So basically Chikur is the Korean equivalent of Sephora. So there's actually only two Sephora stores in Korea and I happen to go to one of them. But by and large, Sephora hasn't been that popular in South Korea for some reason. So you can see Chikurs everywhere and I'll put up some pictures of the inside of Chikur just so you guys can get a little bit of a sense of the vibe, but it is quite similar to a Sephora. So you see them in the city, you have all of these different racks with each individual brand and you can basically test out all the products yourself. One thing I read is part of the reason Chikur is so popular as opposed to Sephora is that the customer service caters more to Korean preferences, which apparently are to not be bothered while you're testing out products. And so I thought that was quite interesting because I feel like in the US, part of what made Sephora popular is they got rid of the makeup counter and let people directly interact with the products. But I guess Chikur goes a step further and the sales associates don't really talk to you and you talk to them. I did, however, talk to a sales associate because I knew nothing about a lot of the Korean brands in the store. So Chikur does have roughly half Western brands and half Korean brands. And I really wanted to try Korean brands that I haven't heard of before. So I stayed away from brands like Clio or 3CE, which you can often find in the US. And I basically asked a sales associate there to help me find a full face of makeup. And I basically just took whatever recommendations she had. So that was quite fun. That was the first time I have ever tried something like this. Usually when I go into a makeup store, I have done my research and have very strong feelings about what I want or don't want. So today will be a very interesting experience testing out these products and seeing whether I can create a really nice full face with them. Now, even though I got a full face of makeup from Chikur, like I said, I also did want to go to Sephora just because the idea of there only being two Sephoras in the whole country did get me intrigued. And so I did also stop by Sephora and pick up a couple products there. So at Sephora, they mostly just had Western brands, but they did carry one luxury Korean brand, which is called Hera. And so I decided to buy two products from Sephora from this brand Hera since I've seen Hera basically in all of the duty free shops carrying luxury beauty products. And this is a much pricier brand than the other brands that I picked up at Chikur. And so I was quite intrigued even though I already had a full face of the other makeup. But with all that background out of the way, let's dive into these makeup products. All right, so let's first start out with this chicker side. And my lips are feeling really dry, so I really want to start off with the moisturizing lip product that I purchased. 
So this guy over here is from a brand called Laka. They basically had a whole side counter that was just of this lip product. This is their Fruity Glam Tint, and I got this in the shade 109 Fresh. Interesting, and it also says gender neutral beauty on the back. So that's really cool, very progressive. So they really sealed this up well. I feel like it's, they make it very obvious if you open and reseal your packaging. And this was one of the products where when I asked the sales associate for a lip product, she immediately beelined towards this and was like, this is one of the top sellers right now. So here we have the really cute bottle. I love this little slanted top and the frosted glass. So let's open this. And I picked this up in sort of a nice cute coral shade since I figured I wanted to do something a little bit fun on the lips since as you'll see, the rest of the look is pretty monochromatic. So let's go ahead and put this on. Ooh, huh. This has a cooling sensation on the lips. Interesting. It's a very unique texture. Huh. And it definitely has a fruity flavor to it. So I'm going to just try to blur out a little bit the edges because what I've seen is really trendy in Korea is the gradient lip is still very much all the rage. And so I've never really done a gradient lip myself, but you want to really feather out the outer portion and concentrate the pigment more on the center. Okay, so this is definitely not a very good gradient lip, but that's okay. This is just my initial moisturizing lip product and I will change this up a little bit later. But so far I do really like this. I love how it's feeling on my lips. It's very hydrating, but very light. It feels more like a lip oil in terms of how thin and light it is, but it has that hydrating feel of a lip gloss. Overall, you can definitely sheer it out quite a bit on the lips, but as you can see on the swatch, you can also build it up for decent pigment payoff. And this color definitely adds a lot of vibrancy. So next, let's get into my base. And so I did pick up this primer. So normally I actually don't use primer, but this is something that the sales associate really recommended. So this is from a brand called Naming, and it's their Dewy Water Skin Primer. And this is in the clear version, which is for blurring. They also had a green version to cancel out redness and a pink version to cancel out yellowness in the skin. But I figured I would just go with the clear one to be safe since I'm not a huge primer person in general. I, I usually just go in straight with foundation. So let's see how this goes. Ooh, very nice, very chic little bottle here. Here's a close up of that packaging. So let's see, you screw it open like this and it's one of those squeezy tubes. So you can see it has sort of a gel like consistency. So let's just put this all over the face. And she recommended this primer because I said I had issues with dehydration on my skin. My skin does tend to be on the dry side. So hopefully this gives me some of that dewy glass skin effect. Ooh, okay, definitely my skin is looking more hydrated with this. It feels nice on the skin too. It feels mostly like I'm putting on another moisturizer. It doesn't have that really strong silicon that a lot of other primers I've tried have. Okay, there we go. Here is the primer on the skin and I can definitely see a bit of glow and shine from this but in a really healthy way. I think if you are having a really nice skin day but just wanted a little bit of dewiness on your skin, this would be really nice. I'm really digging how this looks actually just by itself. So, so far this is promising. Also, I do have my standard skincare on underneath this, including sunscreen and moisturizer. And so it's good to see that there's no pilling because often I find that a lot of primers don't react well with my sunscreen and, and a pilling, but this is looking good so far, no pilling. So next up for foundation, since we're talking about K-beauty, I had to pick up some cushion foundations. 
And so I actually have two here. So one of these is from Chikur, and this is from a brand called Jung Sam Mole. Sorry, I'm probably butchering that name a lot. But this was the product that the sales associate recommended when I said I have dry skin. Here's some of the details about the product, and it does come with SPF 50 PA++++. The claims of this product are that it should create a natural nude skin look and that it's a complexion corrector and protects against environmental stressors. And this has a 12 month shelf life. The cushion also comes with a refill cushion, which is quite handy. And this is what the compact itself looks like. So very nice and chic. And I got this in the shade 21 medium, which is their deepest shade. So one thing you'll note if you do try Korean beauty products is they have extremely limited shade ranges. In the other foundation, I also picked up the deepest shade. So let's go ahead and first try this out. So here's how it looks inside. You get a nice little puff over here. Very cute, it kind of matches the aesthetic of the packaging. And then you have a little mirror, and then you have this cover over here. So let's see, we take this film off, and here is the cushion itself. And so let's go ahead and just use the provided puff. And I'm gonna put this guy on the left side of my face. Oh wow, that's very cooling upon touch. Huh, interesting. It feels very refreshing on the skin. And as you guys can tell, it is very light on me. Okay, so definitely not my summer shade match. Oh, oh man, this is, okay, well, I'm gonna apply a sheer layer <laughs> because I don't want to look like a ghost, but oh man, this being the deepest shade, guys, if you are not very, very fair, you are not gonna be able to use this product. But shade match aside, this does have a really nice dewy effect on the skin. Oh my gosh, I'm looking at my face in the mirror and it looks like I have white face paint on. Oh, uh, yikes, this is not good. Okay, well, we'll see. <laughs> this is maybe gonna work for me in like the dead of winter perhaps. Oh, this is actually higher coverage as well than I anticipated. I just sort of dipped in once and I thought I would have to dip in multiple times, but I think maybe in part because the shade is just so light on my skin, it's giving me good coverage <laughs> for better or worse. Oh man, I mean, if this were my right shade match, I might be really into this coverage. I mean, I don't think I really even need a concealer, which is good. I realized after the fact that even though I thought I bought a full face of makeup, I did forget concealer. Oh, oh my gosh, this is looking pretty clown-like. Okay, well, let's just ignore the shade for a second and just think about, just try to evaluate this on the basis of the formula, which is very nice and glowy for sure. Okay, I'm gonna have to even this out. So let's go ahead and dive in now to the other foundation. Let's see if this is any better on me. So this is Hera, this is their black cushion. This is a 24 hour foundation and it should be more matte in comparison to the other one. This is in the shade 23N1. Hopefully this is a little bit better of a shade match for me. This is also their deepest shade. And you guys might have heard of this brand if you are a big fan of black pink because Jenny from Blackpink is basically the spokesperson for this brand. So here is the compact, and I should mention Hera is a luxury brand, and this cushion was very pricey. So the one I just put on this side, this was maybe like $30, this was like $60, so it is quite a bit more pricey than the other cushion. So inside we have again a little puff and this one kind of has that faux leather on one side and then the sponge on the other. And then let's open up the inside. There we go. 
Ooh, that's also looking kind of light. Oh my gosh, my face looks really intense right now. Okay, so let's see how this goes. So I'm picking up some of this. This is also looking pretty light. Okay, hmm. Yeah, so PSA, if you want to try Korean beauty and you have anything above a light medium skin tone in the US or Europe, you're probably going to not be able to find a shade match in Korean beauty. At least I'm evening out my face a little bit. I don't know why I look so white in the monitor, especially with the red lips and this green dress. I'm getting major Joker vibes, which that was not the theme of today's video. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm gonna make this work. I'm kind of disappointed too, because I spent like a lot of money on these cushions. They're definitely brightening. I will give them that if you are into that sort of very ghastly aesthetic. And I think as you can see, this side is definitely way more matte than the other. I mean, we still have that hydrating dewy base underneath. So I think if I did not have that, this would look even more matte on the skin. Let's just add a little bit more to the center of my face. I was really hoping this would be a little bit deeper than the other one. But alas, I think they're basically the same depth for the most part. And I would say the coverage for both of these is medium, but buildable. But definitely the most obvious aspect of these is just how white they are. Oh my gosh. I, I keep looking at my, I think it looks even worse on camera than it does in person. In person, it's looking pretty white, but I think something about the way the light is bouncing off. Because both of these also have SPF, I forgot to mention this Hera one has SPF 34 and of course the other one has SPF 50. So yeah, wow. Okay, this was maybe a bit of an ill-advised move to pick up these foundations. Okay, so here we are. I mean, if I put my hands next to my face, I think you can see just how jarring the difference is. Uh, I probably will have to just take all of this off. I honestly don't even know if I'm gonna upload this video because I look like a clown. I look like the Joker. Let's go ahead and try out these other products. So let's go in immediately actually into this bronzer that I picked up. Hopefully this helps us a little bit. I might actually put this all over my face. So this is the ROM and Better Than Shape and this is in the color story two walnut grain. They basically only had two colors, one that was cooler toned and this is the warmer toned one. And I'm not really sure if Rom and is how you pronounce the name of this brand. So definitely let me know down below the correct pronunciation of all these brands because I'm just going off of how they look to me. And this was one of two Korean bronzing products that they had in the store. So it seems like in general, bronzer is not that popular of a product. And this is maybe actually more of a contour than a bronzer. So you can see the product actually has two sides, a deeper shade and a slightly lighter shade. So let's get this on my face, taking my refer number four brush. I'm gonna start with the deeper shade. Hopefully this shows up on me. I mean, it should at least show up against this really white base. So let's put that here on my cheeks. Okay, that actually, that's a pretty nice contour shade. I would say on me, it's not really that warm. And this is, as you can tell, a totally matte powder. So it's not gonna give you that sort of golden bronze. But my sense from all the ads I saw in Korea was that sort of bronzed goddess look is not really their aesthetic. In general, what I noticed in ads is there wasn't a whole lot of cheek products used. So the aesthetic seems to be a very pale face and then very light eye makeup and maybe a little bit of a brighter lip, but pretty much no blush or bronzer. Okay, I'm glad that this is at least helping a little bit with deepening this up. But man, I have never put on 
a product that's so light, especially for these being the deepest shades in these lines. It's honestly a little alarming for me. I knew that my skin tone was deeper than most people in Korea, but man, I feel like this is like three shades too light for me. I do like this powder though. It is going on very nicely and blending out super easily, but I'm not sure how well this will show up if I use this with my normal foundation because it's showing up against this extremely, extremely white base, but that's not saying that much. Alrighty, so there we are. We have a little bit more color on my face now. So now going in with my refer number five brush, I'm gonna try putting this as an all over face powder. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like a lighter bronze or if it's just a face powder, but I'm gonna use it as a face powder because I could use any color <laughs> that I can get at this point. Okay, that definitely mattified everything down. Let's put on this glowy side as well. I think you can see that it instantly brings down the shine. Okay, I will treat this as a face powder, regardless of whether it's meant to be used that way or not. I think the fact that it brought down the shine also has helped a tiny bit with just how white everything was looking, because I think part of the issue too was between the SPF and the glowiness, there was just a lot of light bouncing back to the camera. So I'm feeling a little bit less like a bright beaming ball of light now. <laughs> Okay, there we go. I think, yeah, my face still looks way, way, way lighter than my hands, but at least I don't look as clownish as before. And let me actually mix these two together and just add some more color again to the perimeter of my face because I just really don't want to look. I actually have to go outside later, so. I don't wanna be looking like a complete ghost. And then with this smaller ABH brush, I'm also just gonna do a tiny bit of nose contouring with that deeper shade. <sighs> All right, I think that powder hopefully might have saved this look. I'll probably continue to add more <laughs> of that deeper shade throughout this look, but at least now I think we're looking slightly more presentable. It is a little bit sad that we got rid of all of that dewiness, but I think it was worth it to not just look like Casper the Ghost. All right, so it's getting really hot in my room with all these lights on, so I put my hair up. And as a side note, the lip tint is a bit staining. I tried washing it off my hands and it left this tint. So if you do pick up that product, just something to note. All right, so now hopefully we are in the clear because from here on out, it's all color products. So let's go in with the brows now. So first off, I have this eyebrow pencil from a brand called Dear Dahlia. And I've actually seen this brand on Instagram. They have very aesthetic, very pretty products. I mean, I think you can see even from this eyebrow pencil box, it's this sort of marble aesthetic. And this is their Perfect Brow Longwear Sculpting Pencil. This is in the shade Dutch Brown. And the sales associate at Chicker actually recommended a lot of products from this brand. I had to remind her that I was trying to try as many brands as possible. So just something to note that at least based on that one sales associate, this does seem to be a pretty popular brand for a wide variety of products. Ooh, interesting. So this eye pencil is actually slightly weighty, huh? It's a pretty nice packaging. It fits the aesthetic of the brand overall. So it has this sort of octagonal shape to it, which is quite unique. And let's see, so one side we have the product itself and it's that sort of chunky shape that's quite popular for Korean brow products. So this is how the shade looks. There's not a ton of pigment in this, so I think this will be a pretty foolproof formula. It's a pretty hard, stiff product, which is what I normally like. And then we have a nice little spoolie on the other side. So I've zoomed you guys in for this portion so you can see more clearly. 
And so I'm just going to basically draw this across my brows and I'm going to try to straighten out my brows a little bit because I noticed in Korea the trend is to have very straight brows. So not much of an arch basically. You kind of bring them out a little bit further but they're kind of that innocent look so you have kind of thick straight brows. All right, and this is going on very easily. Again, I feel like this is a pretty foolproof formula because it's not going to lead any sort of like heavy streak on your brows, but it still has enough pigment payoff. I don't feel like I'm struggling to draw them in. Okay, that was actually pretty quick and easy, and you can see the difference in my two brows here. So now let's just do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm just going to brush these out. But that was a pretty good first impressions of this product because it was just very, very quick and easy. I think especially if you're looking for that kind of natural brow look, this will give it to you without much effort. Next up, I picked up a brow mascara. So this is from a brand called Hints or Hinsi. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Um, this is in the shade Dark Brown and it's their signature brow shaper. So this is what the product looks like. Pretty standard packaging for a brow mascara. So now let's try this on. Oh wow, this is a very tiny little spoolie, huh? It's very, very cute. All right, so let's brush this in. Wow, okay, this is actually very pigmented. If you want more of a one and done look, I think you could definitely just use this by itself. I feel like it does have good hold though because I feel like when I brush my brow hairs in one direction, it's really sticking, which is quite surprising because for me, I feel like my brow hairs normally just kind of do their own thing, especially with tinted brow gels. I don't really expect them to stay in place. All right, so that might be good or bad. This is just different from what I was expecting. And so I'll have to keep playing around with that, maybe use it by itself. Let me actually just add a little bit more brow pencil to this front part. This patch over here where I don't really have much hair is always the trickiest part for me in terms of brows. So now let's go into the eyes. So I picked up this little eye trio from Dear Dahlia. This is in the Color Story Romantic Bloom. Ooh, this is such a cute little packaging, huh? Interesting. So this is the packaging itself. Again, it has that white marble octagonal aesthetic and it has gold trim throughout as well. So let's open it up. Ooh, okay. So one side has this shimmer shade and then the other side has these two matte shades. All right, so let me first just give you guys some quick swatches. This is a very small little compact. So there's the lighter shade. Here's the deeper shade. Obviously not actually that deep, but this is Korean makeup. And then we have the shimmer shade. Ooh, oh, the shimmer shade's really nice, actually. So here we have those. Oh, okay, I really like the way this shimmer is looking. It actually, let me give you guys a close up. It actually has different colors within it. So there's some glitters that are silver, some that are coppery. It actually reminds me of some Charlotte Tilbury shimmers that I really like. So I was debating whether to get a palette or one of these smaller compacts. And I ended up deciding on this because even though I normally love eyeshadow palettes, it's typically my favorite item in makeup. The palettes that I saw in Korea generally didn't have that much depth or variety of color to them. And I feel like in general, the aesthetic there is much more simple eyeshadow. So really natural, really soft, just a little bit of glimmer on the lids. And so I figured this was more characteristic of the types of looks I see most Korean people doing. So let's start out with the matte side. So I'm gonna first dip into the lighter shade and I'm basically gonna put this kind of all over. I'm gonna use this to set my lids. I did put some powder on the lids in addition to that cushion foundation, but I think you could use a little bit more setting as well. 
And as you can see, this is a very pretty peachy shade, very, very natural on my skin tone. And now I'm gonna go into the deeper shade and yeah, this is actually not that deep either, so I'm going to kind of do it everywhere as well, but maybe concentrate it a little bit more closely to my lash line. This is very much just soft, easy makeup. Not really trying to do like anything super glam. This combo is very everyday friendly. I think you could just stop here and get some eyeliner or mascara and call it a day. Of course, I am most excited about that shimmer though, so I'm going to dip into that and just put, ooh, oh, that's so pretty. Okay, I do really like the shimmer shade. It has that nice glimmer, kind of glints when the light hits it. So I'm just gonna kind of lightly scatter this all over the lid. Ooh, very pretty. All right, I do not regret buying this at all. This is very pretty. I mean, the mattes are obviously not special colors, but I think the quality is quite nice. And this compact is just so easy to throw in a bag as well. It reminds me a lot of Kaja, which is also a Korean beauty brand. So I guess this sort of kind of throw in your purse, like three eyeshadow look is quite popular there. I am just gonna take a little bit more of the lighter shade and use that, just diffuse the crease area a little bit more. Overall, very nice. I mean, absolutely minimal fallout that I've gotten and very nice, very pretty natural look. I'm also just gonna go in with my Wayne Goss number 20 brush and run a little bit of that deeper shade just along the lash line, kind of more on the outer corner because I feel like one thing I did notice in Korea is there seems to be more of a preference for slightly droopy eyes. So oftentimes I would see a lot of emphasis in this outer corner area, which just kind of brings down the eye a little bit and gives it that kind of innocent puppy dog look. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the lighter matte as well and just run it along. But in general, I didn't see people doing a lot with their lower lash line. So next up for eyeliner, I have this Artist Coal Liner from Jung Seng Mol. Again, so sorry for butchering these names. This is in Coal Brown, and this should be a long lasting liner color. Ooh, nice. So this is what the pencil looks like. Very classy. And this is a brush tip liner, which is my preference. Let's just start in the inner corner and go outwards. Okay, this is gliding on quite easily. I would say this is a little bit less pigmented than what I'm used to with my other eyeliners, but it is gliding on very nicely. And I do like the color. The color is sort of a cool toned brown color. So somewhat similar to black, but a little bit, but a little bit more natural. Okay, I went a little bit too far out with that wing. Let's see, can I blend that out at all? Okay, I might've messed that up. Okay, I think I managed to rub off the excess liner. So let's try that again. Alrighty, so here we have the two sides. I will say I'm not liking how this liner is not that pigmented. Even though I like the color, I feel like it looks a little bit patchy in the wing because I think, I don't know if you guys can see here, but basically it's not that opaque. And so you sort of have to go over it several times if you want it to be opaque. But in the process of going over it, it sort of starts looking a little bit patchy. Yeah, not my favorite liner upon first impressions by any means. So to finish off the eye look, I have this pencil from Sister Anne. And this apparently is one of the most popular eyeliner pencils in Korea. And, and so this was actually the initial brand that the store associate went to when I said I wanted in eyeliner but because i normally prefer a liquid liner for my upper lash line i ended up getting this in the shade champagne gold because i wanted something more so for my lower lash line so i'm gonna just tilt my head down a bit and put this on the inner portion of my lower lash line and I know this is a very long lasting liner because when I was in store, I put some on my hand and then tried to remove it. And it was basically budge proof right away, even with heavy duty makeup remover. So I'm hoping this will cling to my waterline nicely. 
but nice. I do like how that looks. I was a little bit worried at first that the champagne gold would be too yellow on me, but I think it actually looks quite nice. And I think as you can tell, it just adds that brightening effect to the eye area. All right, so next up for the cheeks, I picked up one blush. This is also from the brand Rom And, and this is their Better Than Cheek. This is in a really cute shade, it's called Fig. And this was the deepest shade that they had for blush. Not really saying a whole lot, but that's why I picked it up even though it's kind of a boring color. It's sort of a peachy nude color, but I figured it would be the one that had the best chance of standing out against my skin tone. Let's just go back in with that refer number five brush. And like I mentioned, blush doesn't seem to be a really big thing in Korea in terms of blush actually really shows up on the skin. So yeah, this is also <laughs> very light, but I think, okay, yeah, with a couple swipes, you can see it, I think. This is pretty. I think this is a very nice, very natural blush, especially if you're quite fair. This brand would work very well for you. It's very matte, but it goes on very seamlessly and blends in really easily. I feel like I didn't really have to do anything to blend that in. Take a little bit of that across my nose. Alrighty, as much as I would love to keep building this up, I think in sticking with the kind of Korean makeup aesthetic, I should probably just leave it there. But it goes really well with this eye look. I mean, everything's very neutral, so that's not surprising. But I think this is definitely giving me Korean beauty vibes. So the last product that I have to finish off this look is a lip product from Hera. And this is their Sensual Powder Matte Liquid Lip. So if you guys have been watching my channel, you know that I usually do not like matte lipsticks. I run far, far away. And this one too was a pretty pricey matte lipstick. I think this was like $40. But I asked the sales associate in Sephora what the most popular products were from this brand, Hera, because I really wanted to have at least two items from this luxury Korean beauty brand. And she said it was the cushion foundation and this matte liquid lip. And so I figured I should give this a try. And my hope is that maybe this will be more like the souffle kind of moussey texture that isn't that drying on the lips. And so before I remove the tint I had on before, let me just show you how it's looking. So it has dried down a lot. It no longer really feels like I have anything on my lips. And it's kind of left that sort of popsicle effect, which I feel like is really popular in Korea. And so if you are looking for that very pretty K-beauty effect of lip, I think this Laka lip tint will really give it to you. I'm gonna try to remove whatever is left though so we can really see this. But as I showed you guys earlier, this does stain a bit, so probably can't remove it entirely. Okay, this is what it looks like after I tried to remove it. But let's just go into this. And this is a somewhat similar color to what I had on earlier from Laka. So hopefully it works. Oh, interesting, huh? In the swatch, it actually looks kind of wet and not very matte when it first comes out. So interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna concentrate this on the middle of the lips because even though I don't really do gradient lips, I kind of wanna see if I can attempt something like this. In hindsight, I guess I should have used a little bit of the cushion on my lips to block out the natural color of my lips. Oh wow, interesting. Hmm. So first off, it does have a floral scent and fragrance. So if you're not into that, you're not gonna like this product. It's not too bad though. I usually am not a huge fan of that, but I feel like it's not too strong in comparison to some brands. It definitely feels more like an oil when you first apply it, like powder in oil. So I wonder if it'll dry down at all or if it'll just kind of look like this. I think as you can see, it also doesn't look that matte upon initial application. It has a tiny bit of that powdery look, but you can still see some sheen from the oil. Oh, I forgot to mention too, this is in the shade Soul Craze, which is a really nice bright coral. On my lips though, I would say it looks more muted than I anticipated. So it definitely ties more into this look 
which is overall kind of natural and pretty, whereas I originally thought this would be a little bit more of a pop of color on the lips. Overall quite nice though. We'll have to see how this wears over the day because I usually hate matte lipsticks and so I hope that this works out well given how much it costs. At least it's definitely not drying upon initial application, but I'm not anticipating that it'll feel very hydrating either. Alrighty, so here we have the final look. What do you guys think? I feel like overall it pulled together pretty well. I think this is very much the kind of look that I saw as very popular throughout Seoul on all the ads and also just in terms of the women walking around. If you are looking for that kind of aesthetic, I think all of these brands and these products will give it to you in a really easy way. So sorry for the discontinuity, but after I finished filming, I realized there was one more product that I forgot to try, which is this mascara from Naming. So this is their Black Touch Up Lash Maker Mascara, and it comes in this really nice silver packaging. And the reason I forgot this is normally I don't use mascara because my lashes are super wimpy and usually no mascaras I use are able to hold a curl but I figured I would try a mascara from Korea since I figure most of their market probably has very similar lashes to me. And this was highly recommended by the sales associate. So let's try this out. Oh, interesting. Huh. So this wand does have a bit of a U curve to it. So let me zoom you guys in and I did already curl my lashes off camera. So let's see if this can render my very straight, very sparse lashes visible. All right, huh. looking decent so far. Definitely adding some volume to these. I think you can now see them, which normally is not the case. But alrighty, so there we go. So this is what the lashes are looking like right after application actually looking pretty good. I'm actually quite impressed because normally for me, even right after putting on mascara, it doesn't show up very much on me. I get, did get a little bit of fallout that's sticking there and then also a little bit on my lids. So I will have to clean that up later. So it's the end of the day. It's been around eight hours since I put on this makeup. So I wanted to just check in with you guys for a quick wear test update before I take all of this off. So overall, I have to say I am quite impressed with this full face of makeup. I feel like now that the foundation has oxidized and really settled into my skin a bit more, it actually looks pretty good. I mean, it's still a little bit light in comparison to my natural skin tone. Definitely, this is more of a winter shade situation for me but it definitely doesn't look the way it does when I first applied it. I think overall it's looking much more natural now on my skin. In terms of the two different sides, I think the side with the Jung Same Mool definitely is a little bit more natural looking, a little bit more hydrated, whereas the side with Hera is a bit more matte. I did notice that this one wore a little bit less well underneath the eye and in my smile lines, but both of them overall look really good. And especially this side, I am incredibly impressed with. It really looks very nice, very natural. I mean, let me actually zoom you guys in so you can see for yourself. I have not done any touch-ups since I last saw you guys. And I think you can see this is looking very, very nice. My blush has also lasted. There's been no fading, same with the bronzer. So everything's been great on that end. I would say my nose area looks a tad bit greasy. So I would say in the future, maybe I wouldn't put the hydrating primer on my nose, but on the whole, I don't see makeup breaking up or looking patchy anywhere. In terms of the lips, I have had two meals since we last talked, and so definitely most of it has faded. There is a little bit of a stain that I still have on on the outer part of my lips though. In terms of the eye area, the brows are looking basically the same. 
the eyeshadow and the eyeliner also are looking great. Basically nothing has changed there. I will say I am extremely, extremely impressed with this mascara. I mean, my lashes look exactly the same now as when I first applied the mascara and that has never happened to me before. Basically, usually when I apply mascara, my lashes just go down basically immediately, like within 10-20 minutes, whereas this has stayed up the whole day. So I am extremely impressed. Like honestly, this naming or naming mascara might change my relationship with mascara because I don't normally put on mascara. I just kind of do eyeliner and call it a day because Mascara never really makes a difference on me, but this actually held my curl. So very, very impressed with this. I'll have to leave in a pinned comment down below how the removal process was for this because I am a little bit worried I might need to really work hard to remove it. But at least in terms of performance, it looks really, really nice. I can actually see my lashes, which basically never happens. So props to this mascara. So on the whole, I would say this full face of Korean makeup has definitely been a success. Kudos to the sales associate at Chikur who helped me put this together because I don't think I would have been able to pick out these products myself and pretty much all of them have gone really well at this point in the day. I think the only slight critique I would just have is, is with the liner. I still do wish it were a little bit more opaque, but honestly, Nothing has smudged, nothing looks out of place. I have been outside in really hot weather today. I've been walking around a lot. I've been eating a lot and everything basically still looks pristine. So I am so excited about this haul and so excited to continue using these products. Thank you all so much for joining me today. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll catch you next time. Bye.